Have you been playing Pokemon Sword and Shield for these last few months or years and have been wondering how come I can't dress up like a very fancy looking businessman, you've been skipping through the game, not grinding, and therefore cannot afford everything that all the shops have to offer. Getting money in this game is actually not that hard. You just pick up what you find, all the hidden items kind of sparkle in the wild area and such, they reset every day, you sell them, you're rich. Of course, there are tricks to making more money off of these items. Finding and selling them isn't all there is to it. For example, you probably already know this. This guy will buy one item for you every day, but he'll buy it for way more than the shops would. So that's why I always keep lots of treasures on hand. I don't sell all of them. I always keep some extras in the bag, just in case this guy wants to buy one. And you make a little bit extra cash. It all adds up. You might think it's not that big of a difference, but trust me, it all adds up. Also, if you want to buy rare items instead of just selling them, this guy sells one too. He also gives you legendary items if you happen to catch legendary Pokemon in the Dynamax Adventures. You may be wondering, okay, so what are the tricks that you think I don't know already? Well, I bet you do know them, but I'm going to explain in depth how to take advantage of them. So, if you open up your bag and go to the treasures pocket, it'll have all these items. Bottle caps, gold bottle caps, nuggets, mushrooms, stardust pearls, and some other random items too, including fossils. Notice that I haven't sold them all. One reason for that is because I already have plenty of money. You can see there I have over 3 million poke, and I have nothing to spend all that money on. That's how rich I've become without even meaning to. Of course, some of that money is for winning tournaments and winning battles, but also a lot of it is from using these tricks. And the main focus of this trick is the Kramomatic on the Isle of Armor. But we'll get to that in a second. First of all, I'd like to remind you that in order to take advantage of this, you need to have as much treasure gathered as possible. So like I mentioned earlier, you need to go to all these locations every single day. The wild area, which spans all the way from Hammerlock in the north to Motorstoke in the middle to meet up spot in the south. Go around it once a day. Go to all your favorite spots to go around on your bike, just round and round. Find all the hidden items. With practice, you will learn where all the good items are. You could even skip the poor items and go straight for the rare items. Of course, the chance of them spawning is random, but I have found that in some places, you will very often find the really rare items. I'm saying, I'm not just talking about tiny mushrooms, I'm talking about ball mushrooms. I'm not just talking about pearls, I'm talking about pearl strings. And I'm not just talking about nuggets, I'm talking about big nuggets. Or, although, I guess I should be more specific and say that you can get all sorts of items. And not just in the wild area, if you have the DLC, which of course not all of you have, but let's say you're lucky enough to buy the DLC, then you go to the Isle of Armor, which of course is where the Kramomatic is. You get lots of items there. There's plenty of beaches here. The Challenge Beach has lots of pearls. The Training Lowlands has a beach. The Fields of Honor has a beach. Beaches are full of stardust and pearls. That's where you get them. Of course, the water is full of feathers. If you want to gather feathers, that's for, you know, different purposes. Caves and forests, they have a lot of apricorns and a lot of stuff. Now, here's another trick, and I'll explain later why you need to gather as many apricorns as possible. And I'm not just talking about for making Pokeballs. And of course, th the final DLC was, of course, the Crown Tundra. Up here in the Path to the Peak and the Snowslide Slope, you will find a lot of experience candies. Down here in uh, Dinatra Hill, you'll find a lot of apricorns. And of course, anywhere that there's a den, you'll find lots of what? But of course, going around and gathering all the rare items is what you want. You want all the little tiny mushrooms, big mushrooms, nuggets, rare bones, everything. And also, shake trees. You gotta shake trees and get those berries. I'll tell you why when we get to the Cremomatic. Lucky for you, if you already know what I'm gonna teach you today, but I really feel like lots of people don't. And I just want to share this information, even though this game has been out for a long time. So, like I was saying, once you go every single day around the, all the areas, get familiar with everything you're going to doing. You got to gather all that treasure that I talked about. And I'm not talk just talking about the treasure thing and the bottle caps and the mushrooms and the nuggets and the star pieces and the pearls and the bones and the shards and the fossils. I'm also talking about berries. I'm also talking about apricorns. And with this trick, you will be making more money than you've ever made before. And also, 
I can also teach you how to get rare items like wishing pieces, bottle caps too, ability capsules, whatever. Bonus trick. Buy vitamins from the dojo machine in bulk of 25 to get them half price. I guess we should do one thing at a time because there's just so much to cover. So that's why I'm talking fast. There's a lot to cover and I don't want to take too much of your time. Let's just get the simple stuff out of the way first. The simple stuff is what you'll be seeing on screen here. Not everything on this list is beneficial. And here's the reason why. When you go to a regular old shop, anywhere that buys items from you, and you want to sell your treasures, each thing has a set price. However, as you see the recipes on screen, the Cremomatic actually uses three items for some of these recipes instead of four. These specific uh, recipes, the order does matter. I repeat, the order does matter. It has to be three items with the second one being a random item. And here's another trick. When it says random item, you might be thinking to just to throw anything in there, but you shouldn't do that. Of course, in this game, some items respawn and you can have infinite of them if you have in a, if an infinite time. However, other items, for example, rare items that are hard to get your hands on, they don't spawn infinitely. So you do not, you do not want to throw those in the Cremomatic. Blunder policy, a jet pack, you know, battle items, uh, assault vest, you know, all these rare items, you only get a few of them in the game if you're lucky. Evil light, these things are good for, for battles, and they're pretty rare. Even if you get more of them, selling them isn't worth it. And of course, throwing them into the Cremomatic to see what comes out, you just do not want to play with that. You gotta know what you're doing before you play with the recipes. And don't pay this guy for recipes. You can get it for me for free. This guy, he's not gonna give you anything except random recipes. Like really random recipes. So don't pay him. When you're putting stuff in the Cremomatic and these recipes on screen say random item, you do not need to put in a random item. You just need to put in the cheapest, easiest to get item. And that of course is what I said earlier, apricorns. Gather as many apricorns as possible. Apricorns are cheap, easy to get, they're not worth much. Selling them isn't worth much. They're, I think they sell for 10. And of course, saving them up for Pokeballs is great, but the chance of getting rare Pokeballs from them is pretty rare. Any Pokeball you can get from Apricorns, you can, might as well get from the store. And of course, if you're talking about the Kurt Balls, well, you already get a few of them in-game anyway. I don't even remember where I got them from, but I think they're free in the story. It's been a while since I've got them. And of course, once in a while, you'll get a Dream Ball from an event, or you can buy a Beast Ball from a trader, Pretty rare, but you don't want to use these anyway. They're just commodities. You know, you don't want to sell them. You don't want to use them unless you absolutely have to. They're just pretty rare for like collection sake, if you're a collector or a hoarder like me. But if you're not, whatever. These apricorns are cheap and they're good as the random item. So let's demonstrate. Combine items. Select the items you want to combine. Okay, so let's say that I want to use the recipe for a big nugget. Like I forgot to mention earlier, these recipes on screen are not all useful because each item has a specific price when you sell them. Therefore, in the recipes, since each costly item is made out of three smaller items plus an apricorn, you gotta calculate their prices. For example, one nugget sells for 5,000. A big nugget sells for 20,000. That means that a big nugget is worth more than three nuggets. So turning three nuggets into a big nugget equals profit. Because if I keep the three nuggets and sell them, that's 15,000, which is less than one big nugget being 20,000. So do the math. I'd rather turn three nuggets into a big nugget. So just to demonstrate, one nugget, one apricorn, Two more nuggets, order matters, in that order. The color of the apricorn does not matter though. You pop it in. This is one of the recipes people already know. It's on Cerebi. Credit goes to him for organizing this years ago. Boom, you get a big nugget. So that's how you get profit. Don't just sell your nuggets. Turn them into big nuggets because you will turn 15,000 into 20,000. That's a very good profit. Of course, there's also turning tiny mushrooms into big mushrooms. But here is where I want to be absolutely clear. Do not use all of these recipes. 
you could listen to me or you could do it, do the research yourself when it comes to their prices. So to be clear, you can turn nuggets into big nuggets. You can turn tiny mushrooms into big mushrooms. Do not turn big mushrooms into ball mushrooms. You can sell big mushrooms on their own. They are not worth turning into ball mushrooms. You can turn stardust into star pieces, but you cannot turn star pieces into comet shards. Star pieces are more valuable separate than comet shards. You can turn pearls into big pearls, but you should not turn big pearls into pearl strings. Three big pearls are worth more separate than turning it into a pearl string. Because one pearl, one big pearl is 4,000. That means three big pearls is 12,000. And a pearl string is 10,000. So you're better off selling the big pearls separately than turning them into a pearl string. In fact, turning big pearls into pearl strings is actually useful for a different reason. So I know I'm being confusing. Let me clarify. When it comes to big mushrooms, do not turn them into ball mushrooms. And star pieces should not be turned into comet shards. Because... They're more valuable separate, but pearl strings are useful in a different recipe, which we will get to. What other recipes are useful? Of course, three rare candies and an apricorn can turn into an ability capsule, as long as the apricorn is the second item. Three bottle caps and an apricorn can turn into a gold bottle cap, as long as the apricorn is the second item. Three dynite ore and an apricorn can turn into a PP up, as long as the apricorn is the second item. Now, the PP up is useful because three PP ups and a pearl string turn into a bottle cap. That's why I said that you should not sell your pearls, big pearls, or pearl strings. You can sell your nuggets and your mushrooms and your stardust all you want, as long as you correctly use the recipes to turn nuggets into big nuggets, etc. What you should do with your pearls is turn them into big pearls. And you can, you can turn your big pearls into pearl strings, even though I said that that wouldn't be smart when it comes to selling. If you want to sell them, sell the big pearls separately. But if you want to get uh, gold bottle caps, here's what you do. First, you turn all your pearls into big pearls and your big pearls into pearl strings. Then you gather up as many PP ups as possible. Now here's the thing. Do not waste your dynot ore to turn, to turn them into PP ups. I mean, unless you absolutely have to, but it's not worth it. Dynite ore are much more valuable without turning them into PP ups. PP ups can be gathered around the game. For example, the lotto idea here at the Rotom. Every day you could do the lottery, and if you have lots of different Pokemon IDs, then you get a random item. And sure, the cheapest one you can get is a Moo Moo Milk, and sometimes you might get like what a rare candy. Don't count on getting a Master Ball though; those are too rare. But the most common item I get is a PP up. So I already have like over 50. That means. That because of the recipes on screen, since three PP ups and a pearl string turn into a bottle cap, and three bottle caps and an apricorn turn into a gold bottle cap, that means you can get gold bottle caps for the price of just nine PP ups and three pearl strings each. That's right, nine PP ups and three pearl strings equals one gold bottle cap, and gold bottle caps are valuable. And of course, like I already mentioned, you can get Ability capsules from rare candies. And there's also other tricks too. But let's say you're low on Stardust. Then in a pinch, you can turn one person berry, which are pretty common, and three apricorns into Stardust. That's right. One person berry and three apricorns turns into Stardust. So to demonstrate what I said earlier, just to prove it. Three PP ups. One, two, three PP ups, and a and one pearl string. Turns into a bottle cap, and as you already know, three bottle caps and an apricorn with. The order mattering in some recipes, while the order not mattering in other recipes, of course, I try to be clear with that. A bottle cap, an apricorn, and two more bottle caps will give you a gold bottle cap. And of course, some of these recipes might not interest you. For example, turning a person berry and three apricorns into stardust isn't really worth it. Those apricorns really are better off not being turned into stardust, unless you absolutely need stardust. Which, of course, is only good for selling, turning into star pieces. And the final trick is probably for one of the rarest items in the game, or at least the most useful. 
And of course, if you know where to find it, good for you, but wishing pieces. Sometimes you really want to find that Pokemon and f you know which den it's in, but you know that you're going to waste a lot of wishing pieces to get it. Well, if you have no choice, then you can actually farm wishing pieces using this little Cremomatic. So, I did my research. And I found out that there's actually many, 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 many ways to get wishing pieces. But like I said earlier, you do not want to just throw any valuable or rare item in the Cremomatic because then you lose it. So here's the cheapest, most effective ways to get wishing pieces. And I mean in bulk for rare bones. Rare bones of course, are in the name, rare. But if you know where to find them, they should give you wishing pieces. Now, the other recipes for wishing pieces are even cheaper. Three nuggets and an apricorn. Of course, I'm low on nuggets, so I'll show you three big mushrooms. Three big mushrooms and an apricorn also give you a wishing piece. I do not think the order matters in this case. Reminder, this is the cheapest ways I could find to make wishing pieces in bulk. This one works. So, on top of three big mushrooms and an apricorn making a wishing piece, you can also make three hard stones. And an apricorn. Hard stones are actually pretty common, if you know where to look. Caves are full of them. So, as you can see, I have plenty of hard stones. Three hard stones. And this apricorn should give me a wishing piece. And finally, the last recipe that I found was an effective way to make wishing pieces was using these specific berries. The lychee berry, the ganlon berry, the salak berry, the pattaya berry, and the apricot berry. Any four of these berries in any combination will give you a wishing piece. Now, of course, these berries are pretty rare and valuable. They have their uses. But if you've gathered enough of them as me and you really need wishing pieces and you don't have, let's say, if you don't have rare bones or nuggets, big mushrooms, hard stones, then you can use these berries, as I demonstrate. Any combination works, but I'm just using the Pattaya berry because I have the most of them and I don't want to run out of the others. In any combination, these four berries turn into wishing pieces. That's right. And before I forget, if you find that you're not getting as many apricorns as you need from shaking trees, or you're getting tired of it, don't forget, the girl that you find around the Isle of Armor sells apricorns for just a few watts. For 100 watts, she'll give you four apricorns, and if you travel around, you'll find her many, many times every single day. Remember, the girl in the blue shirt sells apricorns, not the girl in the white shirt. She just trades regional variants. And, of course, PP ups are most easily found from the lottery every day. Of course, it'll take a long time to gather enough. The best way to get gold bottle caps is with three bottle caps and an apricorn. And the best way to get bottle caps is with three PP ups and a pearl string. And of course, even if you don't want to go around on beaches and get all the free pearls and big pearls that are there, there's also a guy in the Crown Tundra village that sells big pearls. Although, Buying it from them is not worth it, in my opinion. You'll be able to make as much money as I did by farming this Cremomatic. If you really want to farm money, this is one of the fastest ways to do it. Or you could just battle the, the tournament, I guess. But I find this way is pretty good. I mean, I have so much money. I have more treasure than I actually need. Look at this. It's like ridiculous. I've been going around to every beach, every cave, every forest, round and round, the whole wild area, every single day for months. 
many days I didn't even play the game. Imagine, I could be like way richer if I did. I don't even need this much money. I don't have anything left to buy. I bought all the clothes. So yeah, if you actually want to buy all the clothes, I suggest you use this method. Thank you guys for watching. I will be looking for more advice to give in the future. I hope I didn't forget anything because putting this together actually took a long time, but it was enjoyable. Uh, consider checking out other videos on my channel. I hope I'll be making more videos like this. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.